Thanks for having me here today. I want to start out by introducing you to Dave. So look at Dave. Look at the emotion that he's displaying there. You know, and, and Dave feels lonely and disconnected and undervalued and, and even depressed. And kind of show of hands, has anyone ever felt this way in their job, in their workplace? I mean, be honest. Like, I mean, really? Never. No. I mean, I, mean, I think these are, these are feelings that a lot of us have going into our, our day-to-day jobs. And then, you know, Sunday night comes around and you have that kind of knot in your belly like, oh, Monday, you know, weekend's over, Monday's coming. And you just don't really have the drive and energy to go into your job. And sometimes you kind of ask yourself, well, is it me? You know, do I have issues? Maybe, you know, maybe it's something else at play there. But oftentimes these feelings are signs of a work, poor workplace culture. And I've worked at, I've done a lot of consulting. I've worked at a lot of places in my 20 plus years in, in the workforce. And I've seen people that there's a palpable fear in, in their organization when they're sitting there at their cubicle and they're kind of looking and they're looking at their phone and, and you know, they're just, there's a, there's a terror. And, and these are the organizations that are, they tell them, go out and be innovative, go out and do great things. It's like, but everyone's really afraid. How are they going to be innovative if they feel lonely and disconnected and depressed? So yeah, these are possible signals of a poor workplace culture. And you ask yourself, well, that's got to have some tangible business cost. And we say, yeah, you, you add this up and it's a $750 billion a year problem. And usually when I pitch this to investors or whomever, they're like, you know, that's a massive number. But you start tallying up the cost of turnover, which is probably the largest cost of that 750. You look at absenteeism, you look at um, workplace quality issues that are at play. Sometimes you, you can add up workplace shrinkage. I mean, if you're in a hospital environment, you know, you've got issues there. So there's legal exposure that comes at play. You start ding, 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 adding it up. 750 is, is, a, is a number that's been at play for a while and it's actually been getting worse. So, you know, there is, there's business reason to address your culture. A lot of times organizations want to go after the, the hottest and latest technology, you know, Bitcoin and drones and all stuff that, you know, they want to be innovative with. But really the people sitting in their seats, that's a massive resource that they need to invest in. And too often there's just lip service paid to that. They're like, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll do some stuff, but it never really happens. Now you contrast that. We, we talked about those problems briefly, but then companies with great cultures. So you take Zappos is often held up there as one of these really awesome companies to work for, and you see things like you know increased ratings. You've got they're more pro- productive, more sales. This outperforming by peers by you know two hundred percent. That's a, a the, the Russell Index. Um, so yeah, there, there's reasons to do it. Again, you know uh, we get the hey, what's the ROI of great culture? It's like well. It's, it's very tangible. You can measure these things with standard business metrics, and you can also look at the savings on, on the other side. Hey, we're not, we don't have this heavy turnover. We don't have this, this absenteeism. We don't have this disengaged workforce. We don't have, for a Six Sigma shop, we can, we can definitely measure that. 